What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake. You're watching Roman Cook. Don't adjust your screen. You're on the right show. We just happen to be filming two videos, and I don't feel like moving around my prep station. The Yoder's over here. We're doing some dry aged dino ribs on our Yoder pellet grill today. Got them from Porter Road, not sponsored. Everyone's using Porter Road right now. I wanted to check them out for myself. So I got some dry aged, they've been sitting there waiting for today and we're going to do them a little different lots of fresh ground pepper probably uh almost a three to one is what i'm thinking today the one thing i didn't tell you guys about the pepper cannon is that it has a little container at the bottom that holds almost three tablespoons down there so Makes it nice and handy. Should give us exactly what we need there. Probably a little bit extra. Diamond kosher salt, three tablespoons of pepper, one and a half tablespoons of diamond kosher salt. That's all we're using today. We'll give that a good shake. And let's have a look at these ribs. Now we're gonna do these a little different today. Some great marbling in there. A fair amount of fat up here, okay? What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take all this fat off and I'm actually gonna save some of this for some sausage making. For those of you who haven't been paying attention, we're gonna be doing a beginner sausage making series uh, here in the next uh, month or two, just getting ready for it. I've been looking forward to it because I've never made sausage before. So I've been keeping all my fat. We're going to make some tallow, do a couple different things. Let's have a closer look at what we're doing here. So we are going to pull all of this off. It's actually quite thin, but this fat is not really going to render down today. And I'm looking for some serious bark. And under this layer of fat here is a whole bunch of silver skin that I don't really care for. And again, <laughs> don't throw this away. We saving that for other stuff. What you can do with all your fat and stuff is just Bag it up, throw it in the freezer. Just keep cutting until you get away from the meat. Because underneath that silver skin right here, see that? We're trying to get rid of that. Take your time. Don't cut away any of the good meat, or at least as little as possible. And this silver skin is pretty tough, so if you angle your knife up towards it, It'll act as a nice little guide. So, here's the trick on these guys. We are actually gonna cut these guys. Individually. Now we've got ourselves a nice looking rib there. No binder. Not that we're going to eat the back, we'll put a little bit on the back. But really what I'm doing is I'm trying to go for a nice little bark here. So we're going extra pepper. Getting all the sides, the ends, the bottom. And that gives us some nice looking ribs. Now the Yoder has been running, it's set to 200 right now. The Yoda's been running for uh, maybe 40 minutes or so. Today we're rolling with Bear Mountain Gourmet Pellets. And uh, let's get these guys on the smoker. What we're gonna do, you guys know how I love to put stuff on the top shelf to get some extra smoke in it. We're gonna do that first. 
200. Just uh, tuck this guy in the back because no one cares about him. But what we're doing here is we're gonna roll at 200 just for an hour, just to get some extra smoke in them. But because there's a bunch of fat in there that I wanna render out, then I'm gonna turn it up to 250 and we're gonna put it, we're gonna move them down to the bottom shelf just to get close to the heat source to help render out the fat. Um, depending on how we're going, doing, I might bump it up to 275. We're gonna play it by ear. All depends on uh, how quick they cook. I'll bring you back a little bit. It's been four hours. Let me bring you up to speed. First hour, rib sat in the top rack, 200 degrees, just sitting in a smoke bath. Then after an hour, I moved them down to the bottom rack and I just let it, laid them on their side. We turned up to 275 and let them cook. Then around the two hour mark, I stood them up on the bone. So uh, they're standing up, the, the fat's rendering down and I let them touch each other a little bit. Normally you don't want that to happen, but I want my ribs to stand up. So we needed the edges to touch. I wanna make sure we're getting all the smoke and the air to flow around that meat so we're getting bark all the way around. Now, the reason why we cut these guys up is to get as much bark on the, uh, the outside as possible. Been four hours, let's have a look. Looking pretty good, pretty good. Nice color on them, good moisture here. Nice color on the back, or the middle one. They're looking really good. They are a tad bit dry on the top. I have not opened this up, sprayed them or anything, so we're gonna do a little bit of that now. And that's about that. These are gonna go for another hour or so. I haven't tempted them yet, but I know they're gonna take at least an hour or so. In an hour or so, I will tempt them, let you know where we're at, and we'll get on the next steps. Been five and a half hours, let's have a look. As you can see, the color is really nice. These guys are but 204, 205, somewhere in there. So we're pretty much done, but they're not quite the tenderness that I want. And because we haven't wrapped them yet, they have a little bit of a crunch to them. So we're gonna fix that. So what we're gonna do here, is we're just gonna wrap these guys in a little bit of tallow just got some tallow that I melted and we just got some standard butcher paper here doesn't have to be a tight wrap at this point because they're almost done. I just want to hold them in a little bit of that tallow goodness. So it's not gonna take too long here. Um, really, they're almost done. What I wanna do is I just try and soften up the outside a little bit. So I'm thinking maybe 30 minutes and then I'll pull them off and rest them and then I'll show you the end result. 
Been another 40 minutes. Time to pull these guys off. Really what we're gonna do now is just let these guys rest. I'm gonna guess we're 211-ish, somewhere in there, uh, based on where we were. I just wanted to soften them up a little bit. Gonna let them rest for 30, 45 minutes. Let me taste some time. Been 45 minutes, let's see how we made out. These guys are both looking really good. Nice and tender. They cooled down a little bit more than I wanted. I got sidetracked, but look. <laughs> That's how you know we met our mark. Look at the coloring in there. Absolutely delicious. That, my friends. Perfect rib. Beef ribs, you take your time on them. Obviously, they take more time than a pork rib, but the one thing I'm going to tell you is cutting them up like we did. You get bark all the way around the outside. Jerby, <coughs> Jerby recently did this and I had to give it a shot. And I, I mean, I like it. I'm not going to touch this other one, although I'm quite tempted to. Uh, but I'll tell you what, the flavor is on point, nice and tender. Exactly what we're looking for in a beef rib. That, my friends, is a delicious, picture-perfect rib. Really enjoyed cutting it up, getting the bark on all sides. Every bite's got a whole bunch of bark in it. Highly recommend you give it a shot. Listen, if you're doing any of the cooks on my channel, tag me on Instagram so I can see what you're doing. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, please do so below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.